Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 33. In this tutorial we are going to look at making our camera move around. First let's go to our graphics header and we are going to move the camera uh, just into our public variables just so that we can access it from the engine. Now let's go into our camera header and there's a few things we will need to add. We are going to add some default vectors for our backward direction, left and right direction. We are going to add some vectors which will store our current forward, left, right, and backward direction. We are going to add some functions to get these vectors for the forward, right, backward, and left. And these are going to be very simple. We're just going to return the right vector for the get right vector for get forward vector we will return the forward vector for the backward vector and lastly the left vector so what we're going to do is as we know anytime our position or our rotation changes we are calling update view matrix so we are going to update these vectors at the end of update view matrix so what we can do is we can get the uh, rotation matrix, call it the vector rotation matrix, equals, we're going to set it to the rotation roll pitch ya. Now for our directional vectors, we don't want to take the y component into play because when we move forward, we want to just move forward. We don't want to move up and fly up in the air. So for our pitch, we'll pass zero. In that way, we don't have to worry about our y values being anything other than zero. For our yaw, we will pass in the uh, y rotation. And for our roll, we'll pass in the z rotation. Or actually, we are not even going to pass in the roll because we aren't ever rolling our camera currently anyways. And that probably has some strange results. So after we create this rotation matrix, we are just going to rotate our directional vectors by this rotation matrix. And that way when we get them, we'll know which direction is forward from the way the camera is currently looking backward, left, and right. So now we need to make our camera move when we press buttons. First, let's go to the graphic CPP and remove where we are currently already moving the camera. So in render frame, we have adjust position and set look at position. We're just going to take those out. And let's go into our engine CPP. More specifically, where we are updating. Now, the way that our camera will work is we can move the mouse to turn it. And we can use WASD to move around and space to go up and Z to go down. So we're going to store our camera speed to move by. Um, if we get a raw mouse move event, then we are just going to adjust the rotation by uh, whatever our change in Y was for our pitch. And then for our yaw, just whatever our change in X was. If we press W, A, S, or D, we're just going to adjust by the vector that relates to that position multiplied by our camera speed. If we press space, we will increase our Y value by our camera speed. And if we press Z, we will decrease our Y value by our camera speed. So let's test this out, see what we get. All right, and we are moving around and it looks good. Oh, our, the Z, I meant to put negative camera speed. I had no way to go down, let's try that again. Okay, so now we can go down, everything looks good. Now, if you wanted to uh, change it so that your mouse only turns when you're holding down right click, for example, that's as easy as just doing mouse dot is right down and putting our if statement inside of that. And now when we test this, our camera will only turn if we are holding down right mouse. So you could do other stuff like interact with a GUI. And that is all that we are going to cover for right now. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to look at implementing a frame timer. Now you might wonder, uh, why do we need the frame timer? 
Well, let me give you one example of why. So currently we have vSync enabled, so we haven't noticed things like this. But if we go to our graphics CPP and we go to the end of our render frame, let's see. Now at the end of our render frame, we are presenting and the first argument is if vSync is on or not. So one is on, zero is off. Well, if we run this program again, when I go to move, you see I'm like, I'm like the flash, I'm really fast. And the reason is because now I'm probably generating at, you know, thousands of frames per second. Where before I was generating at probably 144 frames per second. So what we can do is we can put in a frame timer and get the frame, the time between each frame. And we can have it so no matter what your FPS is running at, your game, uh, your movement will be at about the same speed. So that is probably what we will do in the next tutorial.